Hello there, ladies, gentlemen and unicorns. My name is Phil and again I'm posting a new video on this channel where I'll be playing your Ludum Dare 42 games. If you haven't noticed or if you weren't quite into the loop, yes, I participated in Ludum Dare 42. No, the Ludum Dare 41 post-mortem is not done yet. And no, there is no game from me for Ludum, Ludum Dare 42 because, yeah, for a number of reasons, but long story short, after the first day, I, I gave up because my game was just getting way out of hand on so many different levels, yeah. I gave up and yes, there will be a documentary on why I gave up and how I gave up and how everything just led to that point of me giving up. So stay tuned, but right now we're here to play some of your Ludum Dara 42 games. Um, as always, I'll be starting uh, with the games from my patrons because I'm so lucky that so many people support me with making videos like this and, and also the post-mortem stuff. So of course they, they get a little bit of special treatment, which is me playing their games first. Uh, that said, uh, I've received a couple of, of submissions uh, to, to play your games, but sadly uh, I don't have as much time as last time to play a couple of games. So there probably will be some games that I won't be able to play. So, but I, yeah, we will look at this uh, next time. But this time now, we're, we're, uh, I'm, I'm going through the, the games of my patrons. So uh, without further ado, let's introduce you to my weird drink uh, today, because it's a little bit of, of already of a tradition that I'll be drinking weird, weird drinks that I f find in the supermarket, which I thought, why is no one's buying this? There's dust all over it. So maybe I should try it. it, it can't be too bad. And this time, this is what I found. This is Fentiman's Cherry Cola. I have never tasted this before. Let's hope it tastes like cola and let's hope it tastes like cherries. So, already smells like cherry coke. It tastes a little bit like, like cola but it's not as sweet. It tastes a little bit like, like those pets from those pets dispensers, you know, those, those little candies. It, it pretty much tastes like it just, just diluted with bubbly water. Anyway, let's get to our first game already. The first game we'll be looking at today is by Kemal Asikgos. Again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your names correctly, so I'm sorry. And Kimal writes, hey Phil, I finished my first LD jam, Guardian of the Tengri Mountain. I hope you can give feedback. As always, it's great uh, that you finally uh, were inspired enough to participate in an LD jam, because the first jam is always the hardest, because you don't know quite the rules or how to submit or how things work out. And even uh, if you never made a, a participated in a game jam, yeah, how you personally deal with all the stress, I know that this time I wasn't doing too well. Either way, it's it's really it's really really great uh, that you finally participated, and I hope you participate even more often than just once. This is a game of point and click. Excellent! I got my point clicky device over here, so we should be good. Remove diamonds before they fill the screen and avoid death due to hunger. There is no music. Okay, from what I can tell from the screenshot here, it already looks very nice, very stylized. It reminds me a little bit of a blend between Journey and, and Limbo. But we will see how the game plays. Game instructions. Your character can move anywhere it likes to move except to the places where black diamonds occupy. I have no idea what this means, so cheers to that. Each movement costs you mana and each removal of diamonds costs you mana. Okay, moving and diamonds cost me mana. You can't remove diamonds if you are far away. Diamond removal is allowed only around their immediate vicinity. Okay, <laughs> if you choose pass, it increases your mana by one and reduces your food by one, so be careful. Again, I have no idea what this means, but it sounds to me like Hearthstone meets survival games, which is interesting. Bug. After a few passes, some diamonds cannot be removed and it is very annoying. I know. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, let's remove the diamonds before a few passes pass. And yeah, we, we, we should be fine. We should figure this out. Okay, let's get the windows built. Windows 64 and get cracking. And here we are. Is there a sound? I've read there is no music. Oh, okay, so I've, I've clicked here and apparently I've used up some mana. Okay, overall, I really like, uh, like I said, I really like the aesthetic of it all. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it makes sense. Uh, this is a strange three based counting system, it appears. 11, 12. This is interesting. I really like it. it. Again, it reminds me of Journey. There's, there's, it hints at so much more than is there. And even Tangri Mountain, what is Tangri Mountain? I don't know. So, but but I like this um, kind of mysteriousness, and also like what makes much sense here are those beads for food and mana. So apparently, when I click, I consume one mana. So let's hit pass, which I assume is the next turn. Okay, an F fell onto me, so I got some food. Let's get this mana thing here, and it recovers my mana. Okay, this makes sense. So everywhere there's this this. Uh, uh, downwards arrow I can travel to. This is fine, this is nice. Oh, okay, so this must be a black diamond. So, okay, I, I recall I can't travel where there's a black diamond. I thought so because uh, once I was hovering my mouse over there, it was as white as the rest here. It's only missing this little downwards arrow. Can I travel here? Get some more food? Yes. So I can't go here. I need to be, if I recall, in the vicinity. So... I can click here and one mana gone, but this is okay. Do I need the food? No, I don't. Okay, maybe now I need the food, so let's go over here. Zap, okay. Got some food and the mana is down two by one. So if I go over here, okay, it consumes one mana and I gain one mana, so I shouldn't be doing this. So let's, let's stay where we are right now. This is fine. Okay, should I go for the food now or let's let's remove this this diamond here. Okay, why is it getting red when I hover over it? I don't know, but this is cool. I don't mind too much. Okay, running low on food here, so let's stock up here on food. And you know what? I could go for this mana and this mana, but why should I? Because I already got enough mana and it would consume. Oh, maybe I should have gone for mana to right because now I can't travel there anymore. Okay, this makes sense. So let's get over here. Take this one out here. Pick up the mana. Go over here. And remove those here. And I've ran out of mana entirely. So this means I can only go here. Okay, why wasn't there a downwards arrow? This was a little bit uh, distracting. Okay, but apparently there are always downwards arrows anyway. So this is good. I need some food. So, okay, so mana. Essentially each turn I'm turning one food into one mana, if this makes sense. Okay, so let's get some more food. Okay, this is getting a little bit problematic here. Okay, let's, let's stock up on food first. And then in the next two turns, take out this one here. Okay, got, got, I think I got some more food. This was helpful, so... Okay, apparently I've waited too long now. This is uh, apparently the, one of the bugs where I can't get rid of this diamond here. This is... Unf oh, 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 no, may maybe it was just because I was out of mana. Okay, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I was out of mana. Okay, need food and mana. Go over here. And remove this one here, and next time I can travel to this food pile here. Okay, need some food. Got some food, go over here and remove the black diamonds. Okay, I, I think I got a hang of this now. Just running low on food or man. Okay, now why isn't there a downwards pointing arrow on number column number six here? Oh, let's let's take this off. There is no sound. <laughs> Uh, I don't get it. Can I travel there? Okay, I can. Okay, I can. So maybe maybe this is just a bug. Okay. But what's throwing me a little bit off is this. Uh, this looks like when, when they are highlighted that I could move there, but apparently I can't. So again, I've just said this before, but yeah, it's, it's really throwing me off a bit. 
So get, get some more food and let's hope for some more mana. There's one. Okay, so the mana is really, the game is a bit stingy when it comes to mana. So you know what? Let's get the food. Take this out of the way. And there's some more mana to take this one out here. So uh, apparently those are getting getting higher that maybe I should take care of those right now. Bam. Or maybe maybe I should go over there because oh damn it, I'm I'm running out of food now. Oh, this was this was very unfortunate. I was so focused to get over there. Ah, oh, the game is like I said, a bit stingy on mana. So of course, yeah. Okay, I died. Probably because I starved. Or either maybe maybe the column was too high already. I don't know. But I think it was because I starved. Okay. Um, final thoughts. This, this is a very polished, very nice game. I really like the puzzle, me puzzle mechanics. Again, it plays a little bit like Hearthstone meets Columns, maybe. Like, like you said, there's this, this one bug, uh, which I didn't encounter, which I thought I encountered, but I was just running low on mana. What would have made things interesting would have been maybe um, the longer the game goes, the more mana you get you get per turn, but also the more uh, uh, diamonds keep keep falling down. Uh, maybe this would would uh, make things a little bit more interesting towards the end, because right now I always felt that I wanted to do more, but I couldn't because I was constantly running out of mana. So from my perspective, maybe try a little bit giving the player more mana to work with, maybe something like this or or that I could stockpile food and choose to turn food into mana, but then again, this wouldn't make much sense because it's pretty much the same resource if it's just one to one. There's a strange noise going on outside. Sounds like an airplane. So yeah, overall thoughts, a uh, very good puzzle game. I could see this also on mobile because essentially you just tap and, and see see what happens. So yeah, maybe add some sound music, maybe some kind of campaign if you want. But overall, the mechanics are there, and this is this is looking looking really nice. So yeah, two thumbs up. What the hell is going on outside? Ah, cherry cola. The next game is from another patron of mine by, oh my god, another name, Frank Jewortz. I think that's a Dutch name, and I think this is how you pronounce it. If not, Frank. I'm sorry. From what I can tell, or from what I know, is that he told me that this was his first time participating in a game jam, or, the, or at least a Ludumdara jam, and his daily job is that of a programmer, but that has nothing to do with games. So what do you do when you're not sure if you can do all this drawing and gaming and, and graphics and input management stuff? Exactly. You make a text adventure, and this is what we'll be looking at right now. Running out of SPA, uh, let's say running out of space, is a text adventure written in Inform 7. Ah, the good old Infocom language. I tried doing that sort of thing briefly around 10 years ago and I decided to give it another go for my first LD Jam. It's playable on the web or you can download the GPL orb file or play using your preferred Glulx interpreter. I have no idea what those are, but I'm assuming those are interpreters for Inform 7. There are no graphics or audio in this game, so I opted out of those categories. Thank you that I won't be needing those because it's getting pretty hot in here. Edit post submission. For those who haven't uh, played this sort of thing before, there's a very nice short introduction at... Uh, PR interactive fiction doc play IF card PDF. Next time I'll remember to include a help command. This is good because nowadays you can't assume that any everyone has played a text adventure. I tried myself making one in TEDS, but it kept crashing and I wasn't sure if it was my horrible coding or the TEDS uh, environment. Either way, let's let's play Escape from Space. And you know what? I'll be playing it on the web. Escape from SPACE. Frank Jewortz, I think. Release one. Try to get out of the simulated authentic perspective creation engine. 
this is some kind of gymnastics you would do if you're developing an engine and really want to have it spell the Moo engine. I don't know, but, but I really like this, that simulated authentic perspective creation engine sounds plausible. Let's be honest, it sounds plausible, like so something that could be out there. Oh, okay, great. Main road. You wake up. You can hear a robotic voice. Welcome to the simulated authentic perspective creation engine. You will enjoy it here. We expect you to want to stay here. What is this space thing? And can you get away? Escape from SPACE. Simulated authentic perspective creation engine by Frank Gewartz, release 10 number 180812. Inform 7, build 6. Uh, okay, it's, it's a game. <laughs> Main road. The road seems to continue to the east and to the west. The street to the north has several buildings to it. You can go north, east and west from here. Let's go west. Uh, uh, go west. Oh, oh, sorry. Reality is a bit distorted here and you end up back where you started from. So, okay, let's, let's go east. You feel yourself being transported back to where you started. So, it's, it's go north. Now I get it. Go north. Street. The street is fairly ordinary. There are buildings to the north and east and the road to the south. You can go north, buildings to the north and the east. Let's go to the buildings to the east. Observatory. Okay. Sh should I make a map now? I I'm not sure. Usually, okay, let let's keep some paper here at hand. Maybe we should need a map. Observatory. This is the observatory where people spend their nights looking at space in a telescope. You can see a telescope and an astronomy here, or you can go west. Okay, let's talk to the astronomer. That's not a verb I recognize. Okay, the uh, look astronomer. The astronomer looks at the telescope, puzzled. He's prodding it with a screwdriver. Okay, let's say take screwdriver. That seems to belong to the astronomer. Okay, let's try again. Talk to. Let's talk to. I'm not sure about the syntax of Inform 7. Astronomer. That's not a verb I recognize. Okay, let's, let's move this bar here up just a little bit. Okay, this one should be easier to follow. Okay, I don't know how to get uh, <laughs> the screwdriver from the astronomer. Okay, no, no, um, that's uh, L is, um, is your telescope. Let's examine the tel telescope. Oh my god. The telescope is pointed at the floor. <laughs> this is interesting. The astronomer is looking at it, trying to figure out what's wrong. Okay, let's examine the astronomer. Stromano looks at the telescope puzzled. He's prodding it with a screwdriver. Okay, I don't know how to get the screwdriver. Maybe we, should, we need to give the astronomer something. Well, let's, let's uh, uh, look around and let's go west and north and to the buildings. Where, screw warehouse. Okay, so we've got a screw warehouse, a large empty warehouse. You can see a large screw here. Oh, this should be related to the screwdriver. You can go south. Let's examine the screw. A large screw. Okay, can I take the screw? Taken. This is good. Let's give it to the astronomer then. Let's go south, west, or was it east? The observatory. Yes. Give screw to astronomer. The astronomer doesn't seem into... He's got a screwdriver. Maybe, maybe use screw on telescope. I only understood as far as you're wanting to use large, use screw with telescope. Use use screw telescope. Ah, um, I'm a little bit stumped. Have, oh, of course, yeah, of course. There's not a help command. Okay, um, screw large screw. Yeah, I'm having a large screw. Hmm. Okay, let's look around. I see a telescope and an astronomer. And I can go west to the street. Let's go to the street, look around. The street is ordinary. The buildings to the north and the east. East observatory. Yeah, this is where it came from. West, east. Okay, good. Got it. North is the screw warehouse. You can see some empty space here. 
space. The space is empty indeed, of course. Yeah, um, go space. That's not something you can enter. So apparently I've taken all there is from the warehouse, which is the giant screw, which I would need for the astronomer. Hmm. I'm missing some options here of what I can do. Okay. Can I go north? No. Can I go west? East? No. I'm in a dead end in the north, which is the uh, observatory. Let's go south. North and east. And to the. Let's go back to the road. Road seems to continue to the east and the west, but wherever you try to go along the road, you end up back where you are. Authentic, they said. There's a building south. Oh, there's a building south of me. Reality control center. Okay. So I've missed. This part here, reality control center. There are console, consoles all around you, full of dials. One of the panels is loose. An orange warning light is flashing. You can go north to the main road. Okay, let's look at the dials. They're just ordinary dials. You don't understand them. Okay, let's let's look at the panel then. The panel is a bit loose. Close inspection. This is why you always look at things in text adventures. On closer, upon closer inspection. Uh, it reveals that there's a screw missing. There's an invitingly r large red button on the panel. We're gonna push it. Push button. Nothing happens. Maybe the panel needs to be fixed first. Okay, let's put screw in panel. You need a screw. Ah, okay. So let's go out north, north. And where is the observatory? East, right. Astronomer. Oh, of course. Um, talk. So maybe, maybe it's speak to astronomer. Didn't understand that sentence. Uh, um, hit astronomer. Violence isn't the answer to this one. Damn it. This is why violent video games are bad. Because you can solve text adventures with them. Well, sometimes you can. Sometimes you can. Okay. We need to separate now the astronomer from their screwdriver. And the telescope is pointed to the floor. Maybe, maybe let's say turn telescope around. It is fixed in place. Tell us, tell us go. The telescope is pointed at the floor, right? Strom is looking at it, trying to figure out what's wrong. Look through telescope. Maybe the, you find nothing of it. Oh, I thought it was pointed at the floor because there was something interesting there. Ah, I can see a telescope and an astronomer. I can go west from the street. And I want to push the big red button, but I can't because I need to get the screwdriver. But I don't know how. Should we look at the cheat sheet? Yeah, yeah, let, let, let's look at the cheat sheet. Open, put in, eat, drink, feel, smell, look under. Oh, maybe it's look under. Let's let's try this. Let's try. Look under telescope. You find nothing of interest. Smell telescope. Well, it's, of course, it's not a smelloscope. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Open telescope. It's nothing you can open. Huh. You know, I'm, I'm really stumped. I'm really stumped. I thought I could talk to the astronomer. Astronomer. I, mean, I don't think that I will find anything. He's prodding it with a screwdriver. Take screwdriver. Ask astronomer for screwdriver. Well, it's better things to do. Um, I'm really not sure how to progress from here, actually. Ah, oh, damn it. I'm sorry, I, I don't think I know how to, to finish this game. Uh, okay, let's have a final look at the cheat sheet. Eat, drink, fill, break, burn, look under, unlock with climb. Let's say, let's try to climb telescope. Little is to be achieved by that. Very snarky game, very snarky. Uh, you know what? Let's go west. 
yeah, south to the warehouse, south, and then a warning light. Or let's say examine light. One of the panels has an orange warning light with the label saying reality error. It is flashing. Oh my god, this is so like my life. Okay, um, take light. It's hardly portable. Damn it. I thought I could take it and give it to the astronomer or put it underneath the telescope so that the astronomer would look through it and stuff. Okay, let's let's have, 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 have try try it one last time, going through all the locations. There are consoles, consoles full of dials. Take dials. Yeah, of course. One of the panels is loose. Take panel. This is another a staple of adventures in general. Just put anything that hasn't been nailed to the place. And apparently, a lot of things have been nailed to the place because Frank knew that I would go around trying to pick up things. Okay, the orange warning lights. Uh, okay, let's go north. You can go north, south, east and west. Let's go east, of course. West, we end up here. Let's go north. And north to the screw warehouse. You can go south. Yeah, I've, I've got the screw. I want a screwdriver. I don't know how to get it. South, east. Is there something that we haven't tried? Smell, astronomer. Hmm, it smells completely 100% like an astronomer would smell. Apparently, completely nothing out of the uh, unexpected sort. <sighs> okay, push astronomer. Yeah, of course he might not like this. Um, um, pull <laughs> astronomer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm completely stumped. But but uh, as, as, as far as uh, things get, of course, this is, uh, as far as I came at least, uh, a very, uh, let's say, not overly complex, let's say, let's put it manageable way of, of, of presenting a text adventure. I really like it because uh, it does up until to the point where I was trying to talk to the astronomer or find out what they want, if I could help them or give them something. This would have helped me to know how to talk to the astronomer or if, 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 if it's not possible, just to nudge me into, into a direction. Maybe maybe I can say hint. Is there a hint system? Help me. No, of course, there's, there's no help system. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing a vital, uh, just, just one clue here. Maybe clue, clue, no, no, okay. <laughs> I think um, uh, that, that's it for, for, for now. But yeah, uh, overall, I, I'm a sucker for, for text adventures, even though usually I don't get far with them because I lack the imagination and sometimes I just want to click on verbs or pretty pictures. But apart from that, uh, uh, as you can probably tell, I've enjoyed myself quite a bit, even though I didn't know what to do. So maybe maybe if you can uh, enlighten us, put, put a clue in the description, so just that I know how to finish this, because I really want to know where the error in my reality is. Is it because there's cherry cola in my coffee bottle i don't have a coffee bottle but overall yeah congratulations on your first uh, ludum dara jam and cheers to many more to come frequent jammer Yerji hizek also uh, uh, jammed for ludum dara 42 and he tweeted at me too bad but this also belongs to game jams i guess in regards of me giving up the documentary will definitely be interesting yeah i think so too my game ran out of scope i somehow made it totally exhausted with bugs and not as polished as i wanted but it works and i'm glad for it so this is more than i could have asked for myself and probably uh, it's, it's more than i achieved by myself so yeah finished game even if it has bugs and not as polished it never is as polished as you want right either way congratulations on finishing let's have a look at Cartoon Tactics. The game is turn-based battle arena mixed with a battle royale games on procedurally generated maps. Oh my god, you got all the buzzwords in there. It's like PUBG meets Fortnite, well, meets No Man's Sky. Without microtransactions, I hope. Well, we will find out. So each game is unique. You control three different alien units, scout, archer and knight, and your goal is to beat opponent units. The map is shrinking over time, so you will run out of space. <laughs> 
uh, if you don't finish them soon. The game is a little experiment to see if I can crunch whole weekends. <laughs> oh my god. So it's more an experiment uh, of, of sleep deprivation. The game is definitely over scope for 40 hours game jam, but I wanted to make this kind of game and I was curious if I can make it in two days. Apparently you did, so congratulations. And it turned out I can. Well, barely. It's not too polished, but hey, it has an AI and procedural generation of maps. <laughs> wow, that, that's pretty something for two days. I mean, your games always are very polished, but this one, even with AI, and I mean, it looks, it, so far from the screenshot, it looks pretty polished, but we will get into this and I will have a pr probably a very harsh verdict. Well, or maybe not. Anyway, I hope you will enjoy it. AI is not very clever, so it should be easy and maybe a bit funny. <laughs> so this, this is very good. Your disclaimer is, my AI is not clever, but funny. You should put this on the box. If there are still boxed copies of games, I don't know, I'm old. But so far, I mean, it's space, it looks, uh, for some reason, there's this whole thing here in space and isometric, it reminds me a little bit of Earl and Toe Jam. If anyone played, played this? What's great about this game? This is a very good headline, so two thumbs up on the headline. It has procedurally generated terrain. Each game is different. It has computer-controlled opponent with really simple AI using A star for traversing graph made from tile map. Oh, the good old A star algorithm. I've known a little bit about it, but I've forgotten all. So two thumbs up. It sounds really, really AI and yeah, trees and nodes and BSP and stuff. I should stop talking. <laughs> And I made it in compo. No matter how the game will be rated, I've already won this my little experiment. Cheers to that. So this, I mean, AI and, and isometric. Isometric, why? Why isometric? This is so hard. So I hope um, you're still sleeping when, when this goes live because apparently I'm pretty sure you need all the sleep you can get now. <laughs> What's not too great? I haven't time to actually sit and play it for a while and tweak parameters. If I had, I would make shrinking of the map faster every round after the first two rounds. It would be more fun. Okay, so the map is shrinking. Uh, I see the, the PUBG stuff. The compo deadline is over though. So it was, so it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, could, could have been worse, right? It could have been much worse. Unit types, knight, slow, strong, melee. Scout, fast, weak, melee, at, at archer, fast, not as fast as a scout, stronger than scout, weaker than knight, ranged attack. Sounds like a pretty solid unit uh, distribution of, of uh, uh, abilities between units, so I like this. Controls. Click on tile with your unit to select it. Click on the tile within action range, move to tile, okay. Click on tile with enemy within fire range attack. Escape, pause, menu. Use tools, Godot Engine, Inkscape and Gimp, Audacity, BFXer. I don't know if this is how you pronounce it, but this is how I call it. So pretty much it's just left clicking. Again, I haven't played the game so far, but from what I can tell is looking at your control scheme, this would work great on mobile. So let's get the Windows built because I want maximum performance. And then let's play Cartoon Tactics with a nice title screen, made in 48 hours from scratch by Jerzy Hisek for Ludum Dara 42. This is, this is a very important disclaimer because usually when you put something online, people say, yeah, it's not that polished and stuff. But telling them that this was made in 48 hours, this is really something. So statistics, victories, defeats, battles, you rank coward. So let's change this by starting the game. Wow, it, it even zooms in. Oh, I okay, this is this is much more than I could have hoped for. Just hold and drag and you can move the, the map around. This is nice. I'm using now my scroll wheel because I was a little bit <laughs> overly enthusiastic and, and thinking maybe it would zoom in and out, but apparently it doesn't need to. Okay, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I like the sounds. So, uh, they, they remind me of, of Yerzy's uh, last gen game, which had similar sounds. Okay, so this is my scout. Okay, let's put my archers in a position and let's get my 
my sword guy, my knight. Close in. Okay, so now the other one uh, is drawing. Okay. I'm not quite sure about the health bars. They seem a little bit flickery to me, but this could also be due to my system. But so far it looks pretty, pretty solid. So, okay, let's get the scout in here. And <laughs> I really dig the sounds. And let's, yeah, let's, let's see if I can get them closer in so that at least I can have the... Oh, okay, so... Oh, okay, so apparently the archer can shoot. Oh, oh no, so okay, now I get it. Probably in the next turn, those uh, uh, tiles will vanish because they got little little uh, uh, skulls on them. This is nice, so let's get the archer in. Maybe get the scout in close. Let's see how, how to fight, if I can fight, okay. Okay, the sword guy. I really need to get the sword guy in front of the archer, otherwise this isn't going to end well. Okay, so my, my scout got hit. And this horrible, uh, ghastly sound, those outer tiles disappeared. So I can see uh, what, uh, what you meant by uh, it should happen faster, which I agree because apparently, uh, I mean, this is just the first level I'm seeing, but I, what I'm guessing is that you try to get uh, to the, your enemies as fast as possible. Usually this will happen uh, in the middle of, of the map, so I don't really care that it's getting smaller outside. Maybe start from the inside out now, or maybe start in random, random tiles and, and have like uh, concentric circles expanding from there, just with holes. I don't know, maybe something along those lines. Okay, so how can I attack? So I kick here and... Okay, so those are little health bars. Okay, so I can try now to move out. Okay, so now I see I have, I have those those little people with uh, uh, white and blue faces against white and red faces. So let's get my archer here. Can I attack? No, I can't attack. But so, okay. So now the archer is in front of the uh, uh, of the knight, which is probably bad. But we will see how this goes for us. Okay. So the AI apparently is just queuing up on this little scout here. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, he's, he's he's like me in, uh, in in school. He's really three. People are queuing up to beat this poor guy. Okay, so let's get my sword guy over here and just attack. Okay, I can't attack anymore. Okay, so um, what I'm not too fond of is this is that I'm. This is probably because I played too much XCOM. Is that I thought after I could move, I still have a possibility to to attack because right now I don't know how the action points are distributed between moving and attacking. But like I, uh, like you said, this was made in 48 hours and for that, it I mean, so far it looks really polished. And I mean, isometric graphics and AI and stuff, okay. it's, it's, it's quite something, so. And okay, turn, okay. Yeah, let's see how, how this turns out, okay. Ah, oh, damn it, damn it. Okay, so it wasn't probably too too wise <laughs> to go attacking with my archer <laughs> in front of the of the enemy knight. So let's let's salvage what we can and at attack the scout here. Okay, our scout is is really not useful. Got still one action point, so maybe let's let's have them here. Okay. This is looking like defeat so far. Okay. Come on. Good. This was good. Okay, now I can't attack, so let's let's hide behind our scout. <laughs> okay, so let's let's have the scout here go after the archer if that's possible. And now here hit hit Oh, I can't hit them. Damn it, I can't hit him. So let's let's retreat towards the center of the map because as we know the, the tiles oh oh this wasn't good. This wasn't good. You know what? I will I will flee now here to the center 
and hope that none of those is, is closing in on me. Okay, so they are closing in. Who would have thought? Good, but but now I'm starting here the, with the attacks, so this is good, so I can have the upper hand here, I hope. I still got some hit points. No, 31, 31. I don't think I got enough hit points to survive this because of the archer. No. Okay, let's let's hope I will survive this round also. Damn it. Okay. Okay, this 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 tastes like defeat. Okay, I got one hit point left. So all I can do is go for the archer. I can't attack the archer now. I can't attack anything. Okay. This wasn't going too well. I've been defeated by an inferior AI. Oh my god, this is this is humiliating. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's try one last round. Okay, this time let's do it clever. Let's have them come for us. My tactic is now the following. I let them advance while I will be staying here out on the fringes of the map. And the one that I'm moving forward is of course the knight. And then have the archer coming right after and then maybe the scout if I need to draw the enemies somewhere. Okay, so here we have the scout coming up. Good. Uh, I'm still very much in favor of, of how they sound. Okay, so I've got the scout pretty much cornered. Let's see how this plays out. Okay, their scout uh, attacks my scout which was not the best move. So now can I attack their scout now with my archer? Yes, I can. How many hits do you take? Damn it. Okay, so <laughs> we got now here uh, 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 like like uh, uh, a ball of yarn, as, as we say, just... just uh, uh, a, a complete mess here of a battle. So okay, with our scout, let's attack their scout. Good, this is good. And with our archer, let's take some hit points off their sword guy, as I like to call him. Okay, so this one will probably advance here. So you know what? I'll be staying where I am. I'll be staying where I am. Okay, so it can attack. Oh no, it, it was the archer who attacked. You know what? Now with my archer, I'll be attacking their knight. Can I still attack? Yes, okay. I'm out of... Do I still have action points? Only for retreating. So let's, let's stay here and hope that we can win this round. Okay, good, good. So we got two, two units left with pretty much full health. Not pretty much, exactly full health. And their units are already a little bit, yeah, injured. Okay, good, good, good. Not so good. Yes. Okay, now this one, this one looks, looks promising. Okay. So to really rub it in, let's have our archer here. Come in closer. And yes. As in any good uh, real-time strategy game, if you have a uh, knight going after an archer, it's making a lot of hits. Uh, hit, hit, yeah, hit, hit points takes takes a lot of hit points. You you know what I'm you know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> okay, victory. Now prove it's not a coincidence. Well, I think from from how I played it and my articulation of my strategy. I can fairly say it wasn't a coincidence, it was battle-hardened wits and maybe a little bit of luck. Okay, so far I really like it. It doesn't look uh, 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 that it's buggy or lacking polish or something. For what it is, maybe have some music, I mean, the, the usual polishing stuff. But from the mechanics, it's simple, but it works. Uh, I just thought of maybe have uh, uh, randomly uh, generated, also randomly uh, uh, 
distributed units, maybe just start with two knights and one scout against uh, uh, three archers or something. Maybe maybe on those lines, just uh, uh, also randomly uh, uh, shuffle uh, the the unit types around or maybe even have it possible that I can select different units for certain, let's say, campaign cards. For, because from, from what it looks right now, it reminds me a little bit of Into the Breach, which is a game by Subset Games. They, they made FTL, Faster Than Light, before, and I've playing it religiously for like, I think, 150 hours already. And it, it reminds me a little bit of this uh, yes, chess-like strategizing with different units. Maybe if you have a campaign, if you should you decide to to keep working on this, maybe have also the the ground tiles uh, have different effects, something like this. Uh, but but so far I really like it. This is a, has a lot of potential, and again I really like your graphic style. You always have this this nice. Uh, a friendly, accessible, very clear style. So this is this is very good. Again, two thumbs up, and I see this as a very, very interesting, let's say, mobile game. But of course, it works also on PC. Either way, yeah, I, I would keep keep working on it. This is it's nice. Gustavo Silva wrote on Twitter, "Hey, Pixel Prophecy." Here's our game I hope you will enjoy. So let's get right to it because on my camera there's just one bar of, of uh, a battery still there. So let's see how far I can go unless we're running out of power or for the recording software. I hope it isn't running out of space. <laughs> Do a Ludum Dara joke. <laughs> oh my God, I shouldn't be allowed to, to make those kind of jokes. Either way, let's have a look at Chill Daddy. Oh, the graphics are very nice. Those look very polished. I like the color scheme already. Hello, Ludum Dare! For the third time, our team is participating in this wonderful game jam. I hope you have fun with our game. This game was made by members of Coffee Machine Studio and Sunside Games. Awesome! So you all came together to make a game. This is this is great. Those games are the best, and I think crunching together really, really um, uh, strengthens friendships unless it completely destroys them. Our social links, programmers, LinkedIn, Guilherme de Souza, I hope I'm pronouncing your names right. Again, I'm so sorry. Gustavo de Souza, Luis Guilherme Pellegrini, artists uh, Tiago Lopez, and also there's an art station link. William Carvalho of, on Oaken Art. Animator was Victor Lopez, and assistant programmers were so many strange letters. Antonio Flavio Aniquarico, Aniquarcio. Alex Ramirez, Vinicius, uh, Paolo Antiquiardico. I'm so sorry. Um, ki to kill the boss, you need to avoid him. Well, this is looks so sounds like a daily office life, right? And coffee machine studios. About the game. You're a father and the destiny separated you and your son. You need to travel in a little and fragile ice block and avoid all obstacles and animals to find your little boy. Oh. Kratos, Kratos voice. <laughs> ah, the new game. Dead of boy. Commands. A, W, S, O, it's vast movement. The keyboard keys to hit the sharks. Okay, shift will boost your speed. Fixed audio bug. Fix the game balance bug. You can die now. <laughs> oh, that's grim. Fixed English. <laughs> Fixed more English. <laughs> this is what my English teacher would would probably write me on my exams. I fixed your English. So uh, where to play the game? Where do I get the game? Of course, maybe I should just click the link where it says Windows. Okay, so we are here in the game and it looks very nice. And it also sounds very nice. This is some chill piano music. I like it. Use was to walk and press shift to boost your boost your bear. Okay. Arrow keys to attack using the boost will drain your stamina and you will be slow. The sun and enemies will damage. Oh, the sun will damage your ice platform and you may run out of space. <laughs> Recover it by staying in cold water pools. Okay, so this was the tutorial, I'm assuming. Yes. The credits, let's have a look at the credits, because uh, all those nice people put a lot of work in this, so the least thing we could do is just look at their names and say, probably well done. I don't know, I haven't played yet, so let's change this and hit start. 
On a sunny day, a father bear and his son decided to go fishing. They grabbed some snacks and their fishing rods, ready for some fun. Press enter to continue. Of course, I mean this is so nicely drawn. Let's continue. They find a nice spot, sit with their rods and start f sit down with the rods and start fishing. The breeze was nice and warm. They were having a fun time. But this game is not about fun. Suddenly the ice started cracking and moving. The place they were sitting broke apart. The father bear fell off the cliff. And the last thing he saw was his son fading in the distance. He landed on a piece of ice that broke apart and drifted away from his home and his son. A long, long time has passed and he woke up dizzy and scared, too far away from home. When he recovered from the shock, he thought, I need to go back to my son. Please, player, help the father bear get to his puppy. You are his only hope. Okay, Star, Star Wars reference. Okay, this is cute. Okay, this is how I attack. Nice animations. Can I attack this one here? Okay, so it, it just cracked my... My... How can I attack here? Oh, my, this is not good. Okay, so... Okay, again, okay, I need to grow here my... Maybe, maybe this is how I grow my... Uh, my <laughs> the, the the little shell that I'm on. It's not called shell, is it? This this floaty piece of ice. I'm not sure. In in German it's Scholle. This is why I'm a little bit unsure. The music, by the way, is very chill. Okay, the only I mean it looks really nice. The only problems that I've I have is right now here with the with the feedback of am I hitting things correctly or not? Okay, uh, yeah. Is this the cool water pool? Apparently, this is why I need to stay there. So I just need to avoid the sharks. But once they are circling my my little ice, let's call it ice island. Oh, okay. Look, look at this. The Colosseum there. Okay, so once once the the sharks decided to circle me, I I really can't get rid of them. So this is why I'm not sure about the, the feedback here of, of am I hitting them correctly or not? I mean, they seem to disappear, but am I hitting them right now? Apparently not. Oh my God, this is, this is the boss and I can only win by avoiding it, right? If I remember correctly. Get, get, get off there. Okay, so <laughs> this was this was fun. Oh, I made it. Oh, can I go over? Can I swim over? No. Oh, I just I just wrecked it. You did it. With your help, Father Bear and his son can go fishing again, and they will be happy for the rest of their lives. Just just because of that, they will be happy. There's there's no global warming. It's just happiness all around. Thanks for playing our game. We wish you can be happy like the bears of this story. Oh, now this is really cute. I really like the music and the graphics. This, this is a lot of polish. This is a lot of polish for this game. This is nice. Press enter to continue. Chill daddy. Okay, so um, final thoughts. This was this was very nice and pleasant. It wasn't too hard. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I wasn't sure about the, the feedback, whether I was hitting things or not. Maybe just have some, there's always particles there, particles and the sound. And another thing that was a little bit distracting to me was this uh, animation priority. So when I was hitting uh, attack, the bear would, would take the ore and just circle it and then hit. It's a little bit like uh, in Dark Souls or Castlevania where you really have to time your attacks. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this, but I can understand why you did it. Otherwise, it would be a little bit too simple uh, 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 arcade experience. But for me, coupled with this lack of definite feedback that I'm hitting things or that I'm missing things, especially with the sharks, I, I, I thought I could maybe whack them when they were circling my little, my little floaty piece of ice. But apparently I can only hit them when they are just 
biting into it. So yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure whether this was making a dent or not. Thankfully, the game was so easy that I apparently I made it on, on, the, on the first try. So this really speaks for the game that everything apart from this little un uncertainty about yeah feedback, uh, um, everything was pretty clear to me. So And of course, it sounded gorgeous. It looked nice. It even had, had an intro. So I, I can see there went a lot of work into this. So uh, yeah, two thumbs up for for the two studios that combined to make Chill Daddy, who was running out of space on his little... I really should look up what it's called, right? I, sh I should do this, I should do this. But yeah, two thumbs up, and thank you very much for watching. My patron with the name Red Hermit, not to be confused with Red Kermit, sent me the link to his game, which is Balloon Critter. It just reads LD42 gem entry, my first Ludum Dare attempt game. So, and you already made something in 3D with Unity for your first game. My first game was a 2D game with Game Maker and it's better than most games after. Either way, congratulations on uh, attempting to do something and apparently finishing. And you even got a, <laughs> a big cat and a very small cat. I like cats. You play as a hypochondriac critter. Oh, okay, hypochondriac critter. Afraid of the air and germs out in the world. So it journeys inside of a balloon. This makes sense. Oh, I wish I could do this. This balloon isn't of the highest quality, so it gradually runs out of space. Ah, slowing down and eventually suffocating the poor critter. So you must make sure to collect and eat cans of beans. <laughs> <laughs> to fill the balloon back up. Ah, oh, that sounds gassy. I mean, classy. This is essentially an endless runner type game with five levels to complete. Controls vast, escape to quit. Oh, so even got some uh, gifts. This is, oh my god, okay. Oh, there are multiple layers to it. This is going fast. <laughs> okay, let's, let's see. This looks like fun. Tools used. Unity, Blender, first time using it. Can't you tell? Well, doesn't look too bad, actually. So, no, I couldn't. Boskia Kjoil, another first used for the game song. Balloon sounds from Impensia. Impensia? I don't know, but apparently we got some nice sounds. So, let's make sure that I hear some sounds. And let's get us the Windows version. Balloon Critter, a game for LD42 by Red Hermit. And I already can hear some weird music. Oh, it even got a beat, nice. Eat cans of beans to increase balloon size, okay? <laughs> the cat is waving <laughs> with a turning capsule. <laughs> this is charming. Don't touch sharp objects. This makes sense since I'm inside a balloon. It's a hypochondriac, so it thinks it's protected in a balloon from for its travels. Okay, so we got a balloon sound. Let's move with vast and get the mouse pointer out of the way. Okay, this this works. Let's. Okay, so it's it's physics based even because of course it's not too easy to steer the balloon. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> Nice farting sound. Can I can I increase my speed? Come on. Come on. Oh my god. I'm going to suffocate. Oh god. Oh god. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, this was close. Okay, so it looks like to be the next level. Oh my god, it's getting it's getting fast real fast. You won this level. On to the next. You ran out of space? Okay, so apparently I've made the level, but then I didn't. But it still counts, which is cool. By the way, the font you used, I think I used the same font for my one and only game that's on Steam. So if your font is called Lemon Milk, then we've been using... Oh, damn it. Then we've been using the same uh, font. Which is nice, because I'm a sucker for fonts, as my wife can probably tell anyone who's asking her or not, because when we just go around in a car, I go, this is Papyrus, this is Eurostyle, this is Futura. I'm such an annoyance, it's incredible. 
Okay, so I really have to make sure to get each and every can there is. Okay, so uh, apparently I'm not going to make this level now because I thought uh, this was already the finish line, but apparently it just speeds you up. So let's commit suicide here. Bye bye, kitty. Ah. Okay, let's try again. Okay, I really need to take into account that uh, how long it takes me to change the direction of my balloon. Okay, so this time I gotta make sure that I'm not running into any bumper capsule obstacles. Okay, it's getting fast, real fast. Okay, didn't get uh, the last can of beans, but apparently this is fine. This was fine. Okay, this one looks like uh, it's going to propel me ahead pretty, pretty sharply. So let's get all <laughs> the farting power that we can. And let's hope here for the best. Oh my God. Okay, so this must be a jump. Yes, this was a jump indeed. Okay, out of bounds. Uh, okay. Should I go for both of the cans or just this one here? Let's let's again go for both of the cans because oh, damn, I'm stuck already. Oh, yeah, this was not good. Let let let's try let's try again and get the mouse pointer out of the way. I know this is not very very professional. Always having the mouse pointer in there. At least there's there's uh, there's no uh, watermark on my recording saying it was recorded with a free version of something. No, I paid for a bandy cam. If you're wondering what I'm recording with. Okay, so let's let's try again. Let's try again. Let's try again again. Okay. Okay, some feedback. Uh, the music is a little bit uh, <laughs> grating. Maybe because it's just of the repetition. But if this is your first time making music, hey, congratulations, you made some music. Okay. I don't know how to get up there. Okay, apparently this is how I get up there. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Okay, so you want to go up. Let's give this one last try. And why is my mouse always ending up there in the screen? I don't know. Okay, you want to go uh, up because at the end, if you if you're really good and don't fall off, <laughs> then there are some bonus cans in there for you. But apparently, I didn't. Oh, I made it! I made it! Oh damn it! Oh damn it! At least, at least we're still there. So come on, get get the can. Oh my god, what is this? What is going on here? Sharp objects, making it harder. Okay, so the level is still not over. This is getting harder. Okay, so let's get this can here. And let's get accelerated here. Oh my god, oh god, this was too close. This was, no! <laughs> Does this still count? Apparently, apparently did it, or this level looks similar. Oh no, there are two red objects here. I think this level is different now. I think this level is different. So it counted <laughs> that we somehow... Or isn't it? No. Is it the same level all over again? Yeah. Seems like it. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, just don't get into contact with those. Apparently, I, I didn't make the level. Okay, so... But I think now... I know how I can make it. No, actually, I don't know. I was just stupid lucky the first time. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, this was close. Come on. Come on, cat. Come on. You can do this. You won this level. On to the next. <sighs> okay. Sweating already. Oh my god. Okay, so this one looks to be a real toughie. Can I jump, actually? No, of course, I can't. Okay, so maybe I shouldn't shouldn't have neglected getting this can here. So let's see if I can make a run for this one here. But first, let's make sure to straighten our balloon out. Oh, this one is... Oh, my God. Oh, God. This was... Once you've accelerated, it's almost impossible to slow down or... Oh, I just saw 
<laughs> the Finnish passing by. Okay, let's give this one last try. But yeah, um, once once you accelerate, you really really should get your beans in a row before accelerating, because you you, you can't really make any changes. You just have to rely on your luck. Maybe maybe just do some some slight corrections to your overall course, but. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> oh god, escape to quit. Wow. This was this was a great great game. It's very arcadey. Congratulations on your first Ludumdara entry. I'm sweating, which means I got very involved. So, yeah, I like it. Of course, it could always use some more polish, but I mean, it's a 3D game made in Unity and you even uh, learned two new programs while you just yeah, I'm trying to finish a jam, so which is great. So two thumbs up and I hope I see your game the next time. Also, maybe in Unity. Or maybe try Game Maker. Rhombus of the famed Rhombosaur Studios wrote me, Awesome, I'll leave you my link so that you don't have to search it. Which is great because I don't know how to search actually on, on the Ludum Dara page. And the game is... Password Camp. And as always, from Rhombus, it's another Pico 8 game. And look at this. Look at this glorious mess of pixels. It is just great. Password Camp! Exclamation mark. Inspired by Friday the 13th on the NES. If you've played this game, it, it really looks a lot like this. So I, I like this one already. Okay, we got some GIFs here. Okay, looks like some jumping going on, some shooting, jumping, shooting, and some boss patterns. More shooting. Looks like priests or exorcists, perhaps? Theme interpretation. Run out of space. A guy runs out of space for memories in his brain. I really like this. And what he remembers is crucial to advance in the game. Okay, so it's a story-based game, apparently. Objective, kill zombie priests. Okay, there, there you have it, zombie priests. To obtain potions, you will need them. Don't worry about using them as the game makes Billy drink one if he's low on health and it has just been hit. So this is some kind of auto health function. So your character apparently pops a health potion itself when it's low on health, which is very healthful. Helpful. Go inside cabins to obtain clues where your murderer is located. Mm. You only have three slots of memory, so you have to decide if the information presented to you is worth remembering or not. This is original, I like this. Fourth, once you have enough clues, you can go into the direction you think your murderer is. And if you really have all the clues, then the guard will simply let you pass. Constraints, you need all three memories to quit the city. Okay, quit the uh, three memories to quit the city. Note, dying doesn't erase your memory. If you lose at the final boss, you can keep trying. The guards die once you see the final boss face. Okay, so, so this sounds like a very friendly game that wants us to finish it. So theme, you run out of space in your brain. Because you're dead. So, there's that. Good. Personal comments. Due to Pico 8's token limit, I had to cut out a pseudo 3D cabin section, which is a shame, because I would have loved to, to play this. But I had planned five cities, but could only make one. <laughs> Classical scoping. But I mean, you, you still finished. So he writes, hope you enjoy the game. So let's play the glorious Pico 8 version in HTML5. Okay, jump is O, shoot is X. This is not too friendly, but I can remap the buttons. Yay! So move is left, right, and the cabins is up. So shooting, jumping. I'm, I'm trying to recall now what I was pushing on the NES pad, but since on the keyboard it's the other way around, so let's let's remap the circle button. Let's make this A. The shooty button, the X button, S. So it's S. Good. Good. Hi, Billy. You don't need to know who I am. Ooh, mysterious. You've been murdered by an old enemy of mine. Don't worry, I'm giving you your life back. But you're on a mission this time. That is to kill your murderer. 
That's weird, but I like it. This process isn't cheap. Your memory will be affected and you'll only be able to remember three things before you run out of memory space. Choose them carefully. I don't know how I should choose them, but... Okay, is this my murderer? I'll only leave with a hint of my murdered being there. Okay, so this must be a zombie priest. Okay, so this is... Oh my god, oh my god. But I really like the arcade shooting. This is... This is... I feel very much at home at this. I'm not good at this, but I feel at home at this. Damn it. I should just... just spamming this guy with bullets. Your friends were killed. But you've respawned, okay. So, so, apparently I should maybe get some more health potions. Okay, so, so far I, I, I really adore the style. It's pixely, it, but it makes sense. I look like a camp counselor from Friday the 13th. At least my bullets don't go in an arc like in the game, which was just incredibly painful there. So let's get another potion. I think there is one. And another one, okay, so I think I now can have a shot at this, whatever this is. Okay, <laughs> apparently <laughs> I'm playing this like I should be collecting the enemy bullets. Okay, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Come on, almost there. Okay, your murder to find your murderer go east. Would you like to save this memory? Slot one, two, three. Memorized! Oh damn it. Okay, this is what I don't like uh, that uh, those zombie priests uh, are right there waiting for you once you get outside. Okay, let's try this one here. Okay, so this is pretty uh, uh, involved again for a, for a jam game where you have multiple levels of gameplay. On the one hand you have this outside map where you just have to avoid and, and uh, uh, shoot the zombie priest to collect uh, potions which you will need here. This password gets you into East City, okay, memorized. Okay, let's let's stock up on some more potions. Should I go into this cabin here? Maybe maybe not. Oh, there's a forest, but let's keep let's keep getting potions because I think I'll be needing them. I think I'll be needing them. Oh, to finish my thought from before, yes, you have multiple layers there of gameplay, which I find really great. One hand, you got this, yeah, this part here, then what's happening inside those cabins, and of course, you got this whole memory slot thing, which I find really interesting in the original. And of course, I like the execution. The animations are nice. Everything what I do makes sense, to me at least. Maybe I've played too many games from, from the NES era, but... But this, like I said, it, it, it comes quite natural. So I've went through the forest. Is this East City? Well, let's, let's head East then. You don't have the password to leave. Okay. So then um, I think I got enough potions. Well, maybe this one. And fight this enemy here. Yeah, it's, it's really a shame that, that uh, because of memory constraints on a not really existing <laughs> console limitations. I mean, Pico 8 at this point is, is, is really, is really, uh, uh, yeah, unfriendly in a way that it won't let you make cartridges that are just bigger because you could say, yeah, I know those are not the limitations, but yeah, let's just, let's just keep ignoring them because I know what I'm doing. Okay, this password gets you to West City. So, okay, I know where to go, but I need, Oh, I, of course, this is now East City, so I need, I need maybe the password to East City or West City. I don't know. Should I go East or West? Well, let's let's try this boss here again. Yeah, I would have loved to see those those pseudo 3D cabin interiors where you fight Freddy. I mean, 
whoever was your killer. So, okay, let's... Okay, what... Ah, oh, damn it, I forgot which was... To find your murderer, go west. So I think the first one was go east, so let's choose this one here. Memorized, okay. Damn it. I, I would have loved to have some way of recalling what my memory was. <laughs> uh, can, wait, wait a second, can I go into the trees? No, of course not. This would have been a nice little easter egg if you could just go up into the woods for some reason. But again, I mean, you were running out of memory constraints even with the game as it is, so... <laughs> Apparently, uh, uh, I don't think this was feasible. But so far, I really like it. I really like it. This is quite engaging. So let's go to West City then. You don't have the password to leave. Okay, so the first one is that I know I need to go to West City. Can I go into different houses and get different kinds of memories? Let's try this again here. Okay, I'm not playing too too skillful here because I know I got the potions to just outlast this guy here. Ah, uh, come on. Okay. To find your murderer, go east. Okay, so apparently... This was not the memory. I want to go west. So... I think I've skipped... Did I sk take this one here? Yeah, I think I skipped this house here. But I'm not sure. Come on. This is really helpful that you have uh, enough potions that you can just do this. This password gets you out of this city. Okay, which one? Maybe let's take slot two. Oh god, I should have memorized what I've memorized. I said this before, but... Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Oh, maybe, maybe get some potions first. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, I think I'm good. You're back, Billy. I've killed you once. I'll kill you twice. Press X to fight. This looks like a horrible chicken face that's right after me. I think it's a chicken face. Oh my god. Okay. So this is the boss reloaded. Thankfully, it's not too hard because I stocked up on potions. So this is... this should be possible. I really like how the jumping works. It's very snappy. It's, it's It feels like there is a little bit too much uh, gravitation involved. On the other hand, it's this I like it better than two, two uh, floaty controls. Okay, so congratulations, Billy. You avenge your death and help the mysterious god that now owes you one. I like this. Your friends are still dead, though. Yeah, it happens. Press X to auto-destroy. Should I should I push? Yeah, let, 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 let's push the button that says auto destroy. I always wanted to push this one. Okay, and we're here back at the starting screen. So wow, okay. This was this was an incredibly big game for a Ludum Dara in 48 hours. This is very well done. Again, I like your Pico 8 games. It all they always have, have this, this nice twist with the gameplay. And again, this one here was also well executed. Uh, the one thing that I didn't uh, enjoy too much was the music because it, it felt like some, some random bleeps now. But on the other hand, you had different kinds of random bleeps depending on the situation, which was good. But uh, again, I, I, I note this, uh, that it's probably a problem not of you not wanting to make the music, but of you not having the time or neither time nor memory to do this. So, uh, yeah, in my opinion, this is a pretty solid Finnish Pico 8 game. So two thumbs up. Patreon and also friend of the show Matt Sponholtz asked on his Twitter, do you enjoy playing Ludum Dari games? Do you have an insatiable fascination with capybaras? Well, look no further, I bring you Capybarbara, a new brow. <laughs> oh Matt, it's always brow-themed games with you. 
But I mean, like, like I replied to the tweet, now I have to play it. How could I not? I mean, the Carpi Barra is winking at me. So, of course, let's play Carpi Barbara. Is it Barbara or Barbara? Or it's like, what up, bra? Carpi Barbara, a new brow. You are Carpi Barbara and our only hope. Another Star Wars reference. <laughs> Story. Help a fellow get back his self-confidence by chewing off the eyebrow hair sprouting all up in the space between his two predominant brows. Unibrow territory. This one. This one here. Put him back at full confidence and maybe, just maybe, he can salvage his relationship and save milk chocolate for everybody. I hope you like milk chocolate because I do. This will probably make more sense after a play. Okay, because it doesn't right now. Controls. Arrows to move, hold spacebar to eat. So pretty much like real life. Known issue. After enough time has passed, there really is no chance of saving him. Huh. Looks like I forget to add depth to the sprites. <laughs> okay, so uh, don't take too long. Favorite mechanic stitched last minute. Voice shake. As the, main, as the man's confidence goes up and down, he comments on his mood and other random things. While this happens, there is an incredible screen shake based on volume spectrum. Because this man is flipping massive in comparison. I wrote and recorded over a hundred lines of dialogue for this. <laughs> oh man, oh man, uh, you had way too much fun with this. So I think this should all go in a post jam version then. Giant finger. When you step out of the brow area, it triggers the man to say something like, Got that itch on my face again! After a couple of seconds, a massive finger slowly approaches the area to scratch the itch. If it hits you, game over. This is it's funny. Roll over. This is a secondary move where Barbara... Oh, okay, it's Barbara. Rolls over and it's so adorable that the hair implodes. This move has a cooldown so you can't spam. Okay, so we are, this is the guy here, and this is the facial hair area, the, the unibrow era. And we are working up his confidence by eating brows. This is as much as I understand. And what I really like about this whole explanation, this screen here, this screenshot says pretty much everything you need to know about the game. So, okay, this is a guy. Apparently, there's there's something here. It's his confidence is 70 of 100. And here, uh, apparently, I'm, I'm controlling this capybara. And those hairs have health bars. So apparently, it's I'm attacking them. And it says eat. And the controls are on the screen. So this is perfectly understandable. It's co completely whack and weird, but I understand it. I understand what I have to do. So without further ado, I keep saying this a lot. Let's let's try and play as Capi Barbara. Okay, there's some 8-bitish sound going on again, which I like very much. Capi Barbara, a new brow, and it's flashing with different colors. This is nice. Press space. I'm pressing space. Did I press space in the wrong? No, all my recordings are still going, so we're, 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 we're good. We're good. Come, Barbara. You are needed. The man before you is none other than... Uh, his name is... Uh... Well, the name is not important. <laughs> what is important is that this man is the love interest of a very influential member of the USDA. That's right, the United States Department of Agriculture. You <laughs> see, Barbara, can I, can I call you Barb? Or Barbar, Barbar the Cabibara. Huh. I, I like that one. You, you could be like my little BBC. Uh, you, you know, the, the broadcasting company. Uh, uh, all right, BBC, I'll get right down to the point. This man is not of importance, but his lady is. You see, they've been going through some tough times, and she's been a total butt lately, and passing some pretty lame laws. One that I'm particularly partial to is her ridiculous ban on milk chocolate. Oh my Call god. Call me sentimental, but, well, shoot. I sure do love me some milk chocolate. Anyways... All we need you to do is eat the eyebrow hairs that are trying to form a unibrow. We feel that with this boost of confidence, so 
it just might be enough to turn his relationship around and, well, save the milk chocolate. <laughs> Good luck, Barbara. I love what's at stake here. Okay, so I'm moving and is this a hair? Oh my god, there's a hair. So I'm eating it. Eat it! How long do I have to eat it? Oh, am I not? Come on. Am I doing this right? I'd... Oh, of course. Plus one. Am I plus one? Confidence, 82. Am I doing things right or not? I don't know. 81. Apparently I do. Oh, of course, eats. Okay, so I need to be right on top of the hair. Okay. So don't take too long. Okay, plus one. Okay, the... I like the music and it's so incredibly pixely, but here it makes perfect sense. Okay, his confidence is down. Oh my god, what's this hair doing over there? So let's let's get rid of this hair here. Okay, I think I think I just messed up my start here. Because I was eating, trying to eat in the wrong place. So yeah, yeah let, let's let's try to keep uh, the the right side from our perspective clean. Okay, there's another hair sprouting here. Good. Good, this one here. Oh my god, I don't think this is possible anymore. I just waited too long in the beginning now. So, oh, too many hairs. Too many hairs. You know what? Let's let's try again. Let's try again. Okay, let's skip the intro and now maybe maybe this is possible here. Okay, so let's get right to it. Plus one. Okay, so it's more a game of whack-a-mole. This I understand. Oh my god, this game is so weird. I really like it. Oh my god, so here are some some hairs. Maybe I should have looked just, just down on what appears to be the mini-map, which is actually a macro, macro map of this, this person. This agriculture guy okay come on confidence 95 percent there's another one yes 99 percent oh there you are and there's another one coming up oh my god come on make the unibrow disappear oh wow you did it ha well done let's just hope that the clean brows does the trick. It should, right? Yeah, it should work. Thank you for your help, Barbara. This was nice. This was Cappy Barbara, a new brow. Matt, I don't know how you pulled it off that you made something related to brows. Now, from my, as, as I know it, two times in a row. So I haven't checked your past entries, but if there are more brows, let me know. You know what? I know what exactly what you use to access the web. A browser. <laughs> Sorry. So overall, yeah, I liked it. Apparently, uh, yeah, if uh, all all those mechanics that didn't get in there, they would probably have made it a little bit more interesting. Because right now it's it's a game of whack a mole and just just be there as fast as you can and it's it's uh, yeah just strategizing where to go next by by looking at the mini map. So overall, it's a very arcadey game. Again, I like the presentation and it's so weird. I I, I like weird stuff because in a hundred years I wouldn't have come up with this. So this is why uh, I like Ludum Dara so much because you get to see such weird shit, which is great. So two thumbs up and thanks. Hjalte Takmose, again, I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. Please let me know how wrong it was on a scale of very wrong to extremely wrong. So Hjalte writes, you probably have lots of LD games to play already, which is true. But here is mine, I promise it's not as frustrating as last time, which is good. So let's have a look at Hjalte's game Hitchbird. In Hitchbird, you play as a bee-eater bird hitching a ride on an elephant. This is so weird, I like it already. The elephant flushes out your prey, but you're not the only hungry bee-eater around. And we got some emojis here of an elephant, a bird and a bee. This is oddly specific for emojis. 
Gameplay, fly into other birds, fly into other birds to scare them away, fly into insects to eat them, make sure you don't run out of stamina in midair, tip elephant backs are great for replenishing rests, activate demon mode by pressing Y once you've beaten 100, uh, 100, <laughs> I'm so bad with numbers that <laughs> I'm reading a 10 as 100. Okay, activate demon mode by pressing Y once you've eaten 10 bees. You can eat, you can now eat the other birds. <laughs> okay, this is a fitting name then. Controls, flap wings, spacebar. Oh, and there's an Xbox control scheme. This is nice. I'll go with the spacebar because I also played racing games on the keyboard because back then I didn't have a racing wheel or a joystick and I had a terrible childhood apparently. Okay, controls, flap wings, spacebar, move around, wasp, camera control, mouse, dash, left mouse, tweet, right mouse, demon, Y. This is pretty good because on my German keyboard, the Y key is right below the A key. It's not very comfortable, but comfortable enough. So, oh, so far it looks really nice. I, I love this, this cell shaded style. It looks, looks very nice. Very nice indeed. Oh my God. Is this an intro? This looks really good. Is this motion blur? Oh my god, you went all in. So this is, but by the way, I've, I forgot to mention it. This is a gem game by Gaut Stuffer, God Stuffer, and Tialte. So it's not a one-person project, but still impressive, nevertheless, for a two-person project. Okay, press P to toggle post-processing effects. Uh, since I love me my post-processing, I will never hit that pesky P button again. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get the Windows version and let's uh, enjoy life as a bird. No sound so far, but oh, this is adorable. And even the, the polygon clouds, this, is, this looks very nice. Okay, let's hit P. Okay, so the post effects also do some color grading. And since color grading is my day job, let's let's keep the color graded version on at all times. Okay, so play or quit? Well, I think I'm ready to play now. Is it loading? Yes, it's loading. Okay, so, oh my God, the, the little walking animation is cute. Okay, and there's even some sound. Okay, I clicked now, apparently outside. Okay, so space is... It's flapping the wings and moving the mouse around for the camera control, which is a little bit distracting because I see my mouse pointer going crazy. Okay, so I'm flying now into other birds to scare them away. And I clicked outside of, of the frame, so... No, those are my... my... Uh, insects. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm clipping through through the elephant's ear, but this is fine. Get away, you pesky bird. Shoo. Okay, I forgot what I need to do apart from eating all the insects. Was I running out of space? No. Okay, so, but so far this, this looks very nice. This looks very cute. Okay, uh, apparently when I'm moving my mouse over <laughs> the, the windows bar, the task bar, and over an icon or something, then the screen disappears for a moment. So maybe, maybe next time, maybe trap the mouse cursor or constrain it to the window. Okay, so I get points for eating the insects. Is this correct? I don't know how to... Am I in rage mode now? Can I get to rage mode? No, it was 10 bees, if I recall. Yeah, it's... Okay, there is even some on-screen display for this. Okay, so this seems to be a very chill game so far. Uh, what I've noticed with a lot of, of gem games is, or Ludum Dare games in general, is that they are essentially arcade games with various kinds of different visuals, either looking like back in the 80s or looking like this, because this one has some very nice style and even animation. And oh my god, what are you doing there, birds? This is a family-friendly YouTube channel. Oh my god, don't fight there. A lot of birds. So let's hit demon mode and... Oh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's eat some birds. Ah, I love this. 
never you can never go wrong with too many particle effects. Oh god, this this visceral sound. It's oh okay again I can trigger trigger this mode because apparently I get way too many points for this. Way too many points. The only gripes that I have is the, the controls are a little bit fidgety. And again, the mouse cursor is not constrained to the window. And sometimes I'm really having problems uh, uh, discerning uh, where exactly in space a certain insect or a certain bird is. And as it probably was demonstrated, let's switch back to demon mode because this is much more effective. Uh, yeah, the, the hitboxes probably of, of the other birds don't work quite, quite well. So far, oh my god, 132 points. I'm the, the worst bird of them all. So again, demon mode, come on. This is much more, much more effective, yeah. But overall, I really like, like the zen-like, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to laugh because I was realizing that I'm talking about a Zen-like experience while I'm just eviscerating other birds here. Okay, so 160 points. You know what? Let's go for 200 points and then call this a day. But so far, yeah, I, I really like it. It's, it's a kind of yeah feel-good feel game. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> when, when I'm not considering all the, the, the carnage that is going on here right now. Come on! Eat this bird, yes. And there's another one. Okay, so... 202 points. This is good. Again, I really like it, uh, how you interpreted the theme. Uh, like, like I said, maybe with other games, in a hundred years I wouldn't have had this kind of idea where I'm a bird that's riding on an elephant that can switch into demon mode uh, by eating insects and then is able to eat up other birds. This is just crazy. But yeah, again, I really like the execution. Of course, uh, you were short on time, which I can see uh, <laughs> there on the animation of the birds. You know what? Let's go for some more carnage and just... <laughs> oh my god! Uh, why do I like this? Why do I like this? This is so simple. It's just colliding with another bird's hitbox. But the particles and the sound and, and the points really make this a nice, a nice experience. So 256, come on, one insect. Can I get 256? It's such a nice round number. Okay, there, there we go. Oh, now I've overshot. You know what? Let's land here on the floor, uh, on, the, on the ground. Okay, so this is how... Oh, I died, apparently, because I'm a bird that must never touch the ground, only the elephant. Okay, <sighs> yeah, what this game uh, needs a little more just is overall polish. Um, I find it very appealing to look at. Again, maybe work a little bit on the animations. Maybe even have the elephant walking or the birds that they fly a little bit more like birds and don't make beelines, <laughs> pun intended, towards towards the insects. Uh, maybe make this a little bit more atmospheric. I don't know, maybe have some trees that the, the elephant passes by or just, yeah, something in, in my opinion. This is all very personal. Just in my opinion, just crank up the visuals even more. Maybe have some nice music. You already got some, some nice atmospheric ambient sounds, which is nice. But overall, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't want it to sound uh, negative. It's a mindless game you can play while doing something other. And if you just pop in your, your headphones, it's just a nice experience of being a bird in Africa that's riding on the back of an elephant. So for some reason, it's soothing. Yes, including the demon mode, which as you see, uh, was the most fun for me because uh, all my actions made such an impact now. I, I got points, I got... I got a cool particle effects. I transformed into a bird with red eyes. So this was very fun for me. So yeah, it was really not as frustrating as last time. So two thumbs up, great job, and thank you for submitting.